This tutorial is designed to discuss the determinants of the real exchange rate and how the interaction of investment and savings and net exports can determine the equilibrium point of the real exchange rate. So essentially the real exchange rate is the relative price of the goods in two countries. So the nominal exchange rate is the exchange rate which is displayed on the markets, essentially how many euros, for example, would buy one US dollar. The real exchange rate is different. It tells us the rate at which we can trade the goods and services of one country for the goods and services of another. And the real exchange rate is sometimes referred to as the terms of trade. In essence, how many of our goods does it require to purchase the goods of another country? So to see the relationship between the real and nominal exchange rates, uh, we'll consider a single example. Okay, so we have one good produced in many countries, and the example we will take is cars. So we'll suppose that a French car costs 10,000 euro, and a similar Japanese car costs 2,800,000 yen. To compare the price of the two cars, obviously we must first convert them into a common currency, so that we're comparing like with like. If we say a euro is worth 140 yen, we can convert the French car which costs 10,000 euro into yen. And the cost of the French car in yen is 1,400,000 yen. Comparing the price of the French car and that of the Japanese car, we can conclude that the French car costs half of what the Japanese car costs. This means that in current prices we can exchange two French cars for one Japanese car. We'll summarize our calculations as follows and formalize them. So the real exchange rate is equal to the euro to yen exchange rate multiplied by the price of the French car all over the price of the Japanese car in yen. And the real exchange rate we get using this calculation for our example is 0.5 Japanese cars per French car. So half a Japanese car per French car. So we generalize this equation as such. So in essence, the real exchange rate is equal to the nominal exchange rate multiplied by the price of the domestic good all over the price of the foreign goods. So this is the general and generic formula for calculating the real exchange rate. The ratio which we exchange foreign and domestic goods depends on the prices of the goods in the local currency and on the rate at which the currencies are actually exchanged. So we can see the nominal exchange rate has an impact on the real exchange rate, as does the relative price of the goods. This calculation for the real exchange rate for a single good suggests how we should define the real exchange rate for a broader basket of goods, so the aggregate price levels in the two economies and the nominal exchange rate between them. So, suppose we wish to calculate the real exchange rate between France and Japan, with France as the domestic economy. Let E be the nominal exchange rate, so the number of yen per euro, P the price level in France, measured in euro, and P asterisk the price level in Japan, measured in yen. And we can calculate the real exchange rate between the two economies as nominal exchange rate times the ratio of the price levels. So this is the real exchange rate is equal to the nominal exchange rate times the price in France over the price in Japan. The real exchange rate between two countries is computed from both the nominal exchange rate and the price levels. And if the real exchange rate is high, Essentially what this is telling us is that foreign goods are relatively cheap and domestic goods are relatively expensive. Whereas if the real exchange rate is low, this indicates that foreign goods are relatively expensive and domestic goods are relatively cheap. And obviously these will then have an impact on our exports. So now we have to ask the question, what macroeconomic impact does the real exchange rate have? So firstly we note the real exchange rate is simply a relative price. And just as the relative price of lunch options can impact on what we decide to eat for lunch, the relative price of domestic and foreign goods affects the demand for these goods. So suppose firstly that the real exchange rate is low. So we calculate a value below 1. In this case, because the domestic economy's goods are relatively cheap compared to foreign goods, domestic residents will want to purchase fewer imported goods, as the imported goods are more expensive. And for the same reason, foreign people in other countries will want to buy many of the cheaper goods supplied by our economy. 
So this essentially means that our exports will go up and our imports will go down. And as a result of this, the quantity of the net exports, that is the difference between exports and imports, will be higher. The opposite will occur when the real exchange rate is high. And in this instance, domestic goods are relatively expensive compared to foreign goods. So our domestic residents will want to buy a lot of foreign goods, driving up our imports, and foreign residents will want to buy fewer of our goods. As our exports are relatively expensive, people will demand less of them. Therefore, the quantity of net exports demanded will be lower. Imports will go up, exports down. We can write this relationship between net exports and real exchange rate as nx is equal to nx times the real exchange rate. And this equation states that net exports are a function of the real exchange rate. If we look at this graphically, we can see we have the real exchange rate on our vertical y-axis and net exports on our horizontal x-axis. We can see a downward sloping line for our net exports times the real exchange rate. What this means is that as the real exchange rate goes up, our net exports will fall. We note that we have a zero point on the graph, which indicates that our net exports can be negative. Imports can be greater than exports. So essentially, if the real exchange rate progresses past a certain point, our net exports will become negative. Our terms of trade will be so bad that we will import more than we will export. So figure one shows this negative relationship between the real exchange rate and demand for net exports. The lower the real exchange rate, the less expensive domestic goods are relative to foreign goods, and thus the greater our net exports. The higher the real exchange rate, the more expensive domestic goods are relative to foreign goods, and thus the lower our net exports, using the logic we've used previously. So note that it's possible for imports to exceed exports, and in this case, NX will be negative, i.e. less than zero. So, we will now turn to addressing the issue of what factors determine the real exchange rate. So we combine the relationship between net exports and the real exchange rate with the earlier models we've developed of the trade balance. So we can summarize our analysis as such. The real exchange rate is related to net exports. When the real exchange rate is low, domestic goods are less expensive to foreign goods and net exports are greater. The trade balance, then, net exports, must be equal to the net capital outflows, which is savings minus investment. So we've seen this in our national income and accounting framework. Savings is fixed by the consumption function and fiscal policy, and investment is fixed by the investment function and the world interest rate. Figure 2 illustrates these two conditions, and we simply overlay our two curves that we've discussed. So what we have in this case is we have S minus I, which is our savings minus our investment curve. We note that this is perfectly vertical. Okay. The reason for this is that it is not dependent on the exchange rate. So savings and investment do not depend on the exchange rate. In this model, we assume that they do not. Savings and investment may depend on the interest rate, but not on our exchange rate. We note, however, that net exports do depend on our exchange rate. So the higher our exchange rate, the lower our net exports. The lower our exchange rate, the higher our net exports. We see that the net, um, that the real exchange rate is equal to where the net exports cut our same with an investment function, so where we have our equilibrium point. So the downward sloping line shows the relationship between the real exchange rate and net exports. So low real exchange rate makes domestic goods relatively inexpensive on foreign markets, and so we have higher net exports. The line representing the excess of savings over investment is vertical, as neither our savings or our investment depend on the real exchange rate. Now, where the two lines cross determines the equilibrium exchange rate. Essentially, at this equilibrium exchange rate, the quantity of domestic currency supplied for the flow of capital abroad equals the quantity of domestic money demanded for the net exports of goods and services. Essentially, the amount of money we are trading on the international markets, so our savings minus investment function, equals the amount of money which is demanded to purchase our goods and services. Figure 2 looks like an ordinary supply and demand framework, and we can almost think of it as such. So it reflects the supply and demand for foreign, foreign exchange. 
The vertical line S minus I represents the net capital outflows and thus the supply of domestic currency to be exchanged into foreign currency and investment abroad. While the downward sloping line R NX represents the net demand for domestic currency coming from all foreigners who want domestic currency to buy our goods. At the equilibrium exchange rate, the supply of our domestic currency available from net capital outflows perfectly balances with the demand for domestic currency by foreigners buying net exports.